Giorgio Vasari from uh, lives in the in the 16th century, right? So the Cinquecento um, was himself a painter and an architect, um, but composed what remains this kind of original work of art history. There had been a few attempts, you know, in antiquity, as we'll we'll soon discuss. You know, uh, people like Pliny the Elder had kind of cataloged uh, great works of art and great artists, um, and you know, you you have people like Lorenzo Ghiberti uh, who had written a kind of you know artistic by autobiography. Um, but this is the first attempt to put together a kind of story about how art developed over time. And it begins in uh, the 1200s in the Dugento, uh, which is kind of what we're going to be building up to um, and moves all the way up to Vasari's day. And Vasari's project is kind of to assemble, you know, it's called The Lives because it's a series of little biographical sketches, little character sketches um, that tell the story not only of the uh, individuals and the paintings that they made, but their character and how that informed their personal development, how that intersected with the course of history and this kind of grand theory going all the way back to antiquity of how art comes to be and dies. Um, and like many histories from this period, uh, it's been shown to be kind of riddled with all sorts of inventions and even inaccuracies. And we're going to mention some of those as we go. Um, and yet, nevertheless, right, one of the most interesting things about it, given that it has some of these sort of uh, fanciful tales, some some uh, some urban legends, it's sort of like a Herodotus in that way. You get some stuff that you sort of think, well, that can't possibly be exact. It's like too good to really be true. Um, and then some things that actually definitely aren't true uh, or are borrowed from elsewhere. Right. Um, and yet, nevertheless, it tells this extremely compelling and I would argue overall accurate story about how art comes to be, uh, how how artists get inspired, how new forms of art develop um, and how the Renaissance comes into being. Vasari essentially invents the term Renaissance. Um, he calls obviously he calls it a Rinascita, because he's writing in Italian, uh, and that means rebirth. Um, and this is picked up by Jules Michelet, who's a French guy. I and mean, this is why we get, you know, the, the Renaissance in the in the 19th century. Um, but it's Vasari who has this idea, and it's very similar to an idea that you know uh, we talked about uh, Petrarch having before him. When we, back when we talked about Petrarch, we talked about this idea of you know resurrection. How is it that the West was was resurrected as Petrarch is traveling through Rome and meditating upon classical history, and whether it can really be united with with Christian thought and so forth, um, you know, similar concept in Vasari, this notion that there are uh, truths from antiquity, uh, aspects of wisdom from antiquity um, that have been essentially lost. And Vasari is very frank about this, that have been lost in the Christian uh, sort of reclamation of the world. And as Christianity transformed the world, I mean, Vasari is, is a Christian, it believes in God, um, and yet he is really kind of scathing, and we'll get there, uh, about, you know, how the Christian church in its enthusiasm for wiping out idols, for kicking out the pagan world, right? In that uh, passion, it it actually destroyed a lot of uh, ancestral inherited knowledge that was already passing out of the world to begin with because of the barbarian conquest of Rome. And I mean, this is, you can see how this story is so sweeping um, that it, it, it kind of grabs up a lot of stuff that we like to talk about.